Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another fit of the Artist Moth. Today we are going to be talking about habitable worlds. Yeah. So we I think yeah well when I say everywhere I, mean, I don't really mean everywhere on the planet because I know, because I know that there are people on the planet I don't know the the habitable zone or the Goldilocks zone around the start. So if I got like a I don't know a uh, uh, a sun type star, right? And I bring up the habitable zone. Make sure that the uh the one is one so So this is a habitable zone of a sun like star. Right? And we all like to think that Planets can only be habitable in this line here. Not true. That is 100% false. The reason why that is is because there are roughly 25 habitable worlds in our solar system. Most of them are the moons of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Well, not really Uranus because its moons are a little bit too small. But like Triton, Titan, Gamini, Callisto, um, Enceladus, uh, moons like that, right? They can all support life because there's like. If you had this as like a, a gas giant, right? It would look exactly like this. And the moons of Jupiter, like Io's here, Europa is about here, Ganymede is about here, Callisto is about here. So Ganymede, really, Jupiter is really basically the same as the Sun. I'm not even joking. But I mean, it's just I think it's just awesome. So what we're going to do is the first thing we're going to talk about is habitable moons around gas giants or around super rocky planets. So if we've got a super rocky planet, like a really, really big rocky planet, made it huge, like 13 times the mass of it, or probably uh, 391 times the mass of Earth, right? So this is a big, big rocket planet, huge. Right? This will most likely, definitely have moods around it. So, what I mean by moons is I mean by something like... Is, if you really want to... Have something like... A... Uh, 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 like a few moons like here... And maybe a soup, like a, 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 um, a, 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 a 0.991. So it's slightly smaller than the Earth, but not by much. So we turn all this on. Let this run for a while. Right? Maybe make this a bit bigger. Okay. Uh, so this all this like this. 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 So this is gonna go out slightly. Uh, this is gonna go out slightly. 
and this is gonna go oh no sorry this is gonna go out slightly now I'm saying slightly but this is a massive shift in orbit but you can see how big these uh, moons actually move so we make this and this is actually getting pretty bloody big now So now if we go to here, right, and the tidal force is going to be huge, I bet. Um, so I've got to hear they care about this big. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. Make the atmosphere about 1.03 atmospheres. Makes albedo pretty low. Uh, and the tidal pile frictions are huge. That's going to obviously cool down pretty fast. But if you think about it, nobody. Uh, a world would be habitable. I don't know why that's on its side. I have no idea. Put that out there like a angle like this. Out like this. So this should be about 0.11 degrees. 0.11.7. Right, so this could have a little bit of water. And then we're going to make the uh, colors pretty green. Low elevation is going to be green as well. High elevation is going to be green as well. Most likely, we'll see. Now, I'm gonna actually change the orbit of this moon slightly so it's not, you know, competing for space. This one as well. This one's gonna shift out so ever so slightly. Ah! So, if you have a rocky world, uh, let me. How big will this be as a gas giant? Uh, not that big. So, if you have this as a gas giant, you have a rocky world, probably slightly smaller than our, our planet. My god, this will be. This, this will be a breakthrough. I mean, obviously, you got the, uh, the famous moon. Moon slash planet thing because it's basically the size of our planet, which is slightly smaller Pandora. And I think everybody knows what Pandora is from Avatar. The thing about the only wrong thing about Pandora and Avatar is that, uh, well, I believe that Pandora is the fourth outer moon. There's five moons all together, right? There's not four, that's five. Pandora's here, and all the other moons are here, right? They're, uh, they're in here. They're very close to the gas giant, and I can't understand that. It's either the gas giant is incredibly uh, light in density. Or something else is going on, but that's the only thing I can find wrong about this movie. Anyway, if you have a large enough gas giant, probably just over four Jupiters in mass, 
um, then you might be able to support a world that is uh, not Earth like temperatures, but like probably about four or five degrees global temperatures. Now, like Earth, that won't be com on the complete planet. It will be cooler at the poles, so about minus 15, minus 20. And around the equator, it will be about 11, 12 degrees. But around here, it will be about 4 or 5 degrees. So you've got the tropics, you've got the, um, the normal zone, and you've got the pole. This object, it says it's 11.6 degrees. That's not true. Here, it's 11.6 degrees, right? This slab here, right? This slab right here. On the tropics, it's warmer. It's about 14, 15 degrees. On the poles, it's freaking frigid cold. It's about minus 10. Probably colder than that. Probably about, yeah, probably a lot colder than that. Probably about minus 63. This is because the reason why the poles are warmer than Earth's poles is because this planet slash moon orbits a huge gas giant. This gas giant's radiation, basically what happens is when the when the moon orbits the gas giant, you got this massive ring of radiation around the gas giant. Now the radiation here is significantly weaker. So these, these tiny moons here are getting bombarded while this uh, flight moon is just flourishing in this radiation. So the radiation comes down into the polar magnetic magnetosphere. So I'm going to turn the magnetosphere on so that you guys get an understanding of what it's like. So it most likely will look like uh, that. So what happens is you got radiation, radiation, and it follows into the polar regions. What happens is it not only supercharges the atmosphere, like creates the world by ice, but it also heats up <coughs> the uh, polar regions. So that's why you get an increase in temperature. Um, hang on. So I forgot to see but I'm not. So I am on well, so. Um, so. What? I think you, some of you guys are going to ask, what will a Earth like world around gas giant look like? From Avatar, an Earth like world around a, a gas giant will, for one, I am pretty sure 99.9% .9 I know it will have no polar ice caps. None whatsoever because the radiation will be following down into the polar magnetic field of the moon and that will be melting the ice incredibly fast. Now in Avatar, Pandora does not have polar ice caps. And some, some guys out there are saying Avatar does have polar ice caps. If Avatar, no, if uh, Pandora had polar ice caps, sorry, it would not be completely covered in forest. For one, the first thing we'll see is around the tropics, it would have deserts. Around here, around the, uh, the, no the normal zone, should I say, because Pandora is a uh, warm Earth-like world because it's got higher concentration of carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and carbon uh, peroxide. Uh, if you don't know, if you don't know what carbon peroxide is, it's basically less dangerous than carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide, but it's better at trapping greenhouse gases. So Pandora has all these. Uh, gases mostly carbon peroxide and um, basically it allows her to trap heat and uh, that way uh, Pandora can keep warm even though the system is about here 
so not too close to the parent star, but within the zone. Now, I know that some of you guys are going to be instantly saying in the in the comment section, uh, how I, I, how are they so close to the gas giant without being ripped apart? That is one thing I can't work out. Is um, well, when you when you look at Avatar. Well, no, no, uh, Pandora, I don't know why I keep coming after. When you look at Pandora, compared to its parent planet, the gas giant is massive. It's absolutely huge. This, I think, this thing, this proves that, um, uh, Polythemus, I think it's called, has a very, very low density. Um, so what that means is that the moons aren't in the the Roche limit. They they they're not in the Roche limit. So that means that they could all be as close as they like without being in the Roche limit because the gas giant is uh, the gas giant surface is just past the Roche limit. So I if the moons want to be in the Roche limit, they need to be in the outer atmosphere of this gas giant. The problem is is that if they were then within a couple hundred years they will be in the asteroid's core because of the uh, frictional forces and gravitational forces and god knows what. What's really, what's really making me confused is that when we look at Pandora, there are no volcanoes whatsoever on Pandora. That's really getting me confused, like where is all this carbon peroxide and carbon dioxide, where did the carbon monoxide come from? One of my best bets is that it is coming from natural um, uh, lakes, lakes on Pandora, where uh, carbon-rich rocks decompose or break up in, you know, like, at the bottom of these massive lakes, and um, the uh, more and more carbon monoxide and peroxide and di dioxide is is built up over hundreds. Probably even thousands of years. It keeps on building. It keeps on building. It keeps on building up until basically the lake just explodes. When this happens, it almost like replenishes the atmosphere with um, greenhouse gases because over time the trees do absorb uh, carbon dioxide. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if trees absorb carbon peroxide. I'm gonna have to look that up. But I do know that trees do not absorb carbon monoxide. So if you try that, trees will not absorb carbon monoxide. Plants also absorb carbon dioxide. Maybe carbon peroxide. Again, I'm going to have to look that up. But I think the best bet for us to look for looking at life is find a gas giant, probably. Uh, definitely larger than Jupiter and if we find one of these gas giants uh, just past Apple's zone with uh, Earth sized world maybe slightly smaller that will be the best find in astronomy I bet I bet you that now this is a pretty large moon right it is big. It's big. It really is big. If we compare it, um, it's massive. It dwarfs her similar moons. The largest is 2.5 times the mass of our moon, but it is only slightly larger. See, for this moon, it's 2.3 times the mass of the moon, but it's stay the same size. And this one is 1.9 times faster the moon, but it's smaller because all these moons have mag. These they just have huge iron cores. And my best bet is that these moons, these smaller moons, are the remains of larger, possibly Earth-like worlds. So maybe the same thing happened in the Pandorian system. The inner moons used to when 
when Pandora and her sibling moves were forming, their inner moods um, were bigger than they were, uh, but um, something happened possibly, that all three collided, uh, their crust and upper mantle were ripped away, then uh, over hundreds of thousands of years, um, the debris was either swallowed up by the gas giant, or by Pandora herself, or Pandora flung most of the material out, out into the uh, Alpha Centauri, or the the the, the, uh, the Centauri system. Now, I at the start of the video, I did say about a fifth moon. Okay, if you look at the cover. The front cover of the DVD case of Pandora, you can see a little white dot. This isn't a star. I know it's not a star because if you look at it, it it, it, do, it, it, it doesn't have the shape of a star. Now, what I think it is is it's a, a moon about here on an orbit like this, right? And uh, this moon is nearly called Saturn, I don't know why it's nearly called Saturn, but anyway. So this moon is on this kind of orbit, um, and I reckon it's possibly a pretty small moon, possibly just over 500 kilometers, um, and if that is the case, then it is maybe, the remain, uh, it may be a failed moon. Like a failed planet, or failed star it could be a failed moon what I think is that this moon used to be an orbit dissimilar as her siblings and then Pandora comes along and just 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 messes her up so now this little tiny moon is on her own orbit on a um, a um, I forgot the name of it um, inclined orbit so uh it's not on the same path as the other moons and it's a failed moon it didn't get to its right uh size but again this smaller moon could be incredibly rich in unobtainium unobtainium is the powerhouse for the uh, uh i thought they live in the company in avatar um anyway it's the powerhouse for humans Oh Pandora. This fifth moon could be the key because of how far away it is. Um, it hasn't been, I think it hasn't been discovered in Avatar yet, but you can clearly see an object um, in orbit around uh, Polyphemus. It's not called Pro Pro uh, uh, Prometheus, I used to think it was called Prometheus, but then I looked at the spin and I thought to myself, well, that's not how you spell Prometheus. And then I found out it was called Polythemus. Polythemus, a guy called a gas giant Polythemus, that, that that really does link to like the density of a gas giant. I think this gas giant is incredibly light. That's why it's called Polythemus, because you know, you know, uh, um, Oh, what's it called? Uh, I don't know what's it called, but it's like a really light stuff, really like uh, plastic, really like um, light uh, plastic material. Uh, and I think this gas giant is just incredibly light. That's why it's so big. But I think this is just amazing. I mean, I know that we've gone on to Avatar and things like that, but I mean. If you want to find life, just look at gas giants that are probably just beyond the habitable zone of a star. Like it could be a K class, orange dwarf, G class, yellow dwarf star, okay? The sun is a G class star, that means it's a yellow dwarf. It's not a white star, okay? It's, well, it's a yellow white star. It's a yellow white star, it's not white. Because a white star, um, well, well, hang on. So I'm getting confused. Here. F class stars, they are yellow white stars. G class, they are yellow stars. Okay. Um, 
A class, they are pure white stars. And uh, in the documentary The Universe, they said that the sun was a white star. If the sun was a white star, it would be an A class star. But I mean, I've got, I've got to give it to them. That was like I think it was in 2013 when they made that episode. So I mean, they they've probably changed it now. Uh, but best bets is K class, G class, F class, possibly A class, N class. Oh. Maybe if the star is calm enough, or if the gas giant has a mega magnetic field. I'm talking about something like something like that, right? Huge, or something like that, right? Massive magnetic field. Now Jupiter's is not that big, surprisingly. Now I know you. Some of you guys have been saying, "Oh, Jupiter's is very big." No, it's not. It's not a big at all. Um, Jupiter actually, for Jupiter's mass, yes, Jupiter, yeah, for, for Jupiter's mass, it has got a very powerful magnetic field. It's actually got a, a huge magnetic field. Jupiter's magnetic field is larger than the Sun, okay? So Jupiter's magnetic field is huge. But if you compare it to, like, I don't know, um, a gas giant four times the mass of Jupiter is back in the field is going to be possibly 12 times the mass of the well not the mass but the size the radius of uh, Jupiter's magnetic field so uh, surprisingly this gas giant isn't that cold it's minus 106 degrees so this means that this gas giant is giving out a lot of heat but the uh, thing is is that uh, where is this heat come from so uh, all sort of things that I know that guys, some of you guys could be putting in the comments why is this gas giant complete hydrogen is because I think that gas giants having a rocky, not an iron core because gas giants do not have iron cores, okay? Um, because iron is in the inner solar system, if you get a gas giant that forms with an iron core, uh, the gas is just gonna. Just uh, it, 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 I don't know, but I do know that a uh, gas giant cannot have an iron core. And again, I'm gonna say I apologize, I am ill, so if I do sound different in this video, then that's why. Um, but um, when James Cameron made this film Avatar, I thought it was absolutely amazing um, because it is not only a good film, but it also. Um, it said in the daily newspaper that it actually helped planetary scientists actually find Earth-like worlds. They were looking for gas giants similar to Prometheus, oh no, not Prometheus, Polythemus, sorry. Uh, they were looking for gas giants like Polythemus. But the thing they missed, they missed out the most is the density of Polythemus herself. She is an incredibly light gas giant. So what this means is that uh, she is... Um, She's four times the mass of Jupiter, but really she is like, um, she's like that big. She's massive, absolutely huge. That's why she looks absolutely huge in the film Avatar. Uh, incredibly big. Uh, and I know I'm talking a lot and I apologize, uh, but, um, if we, I reckon within the next 20 to 30 years, we will find a gas giant around another star, possibly Alpha Centauri or Beta Centauri. That will be absolutely amazing because that will be that Avatar uh, Pandora is 100% true. If we find a gas giant with an Earth like world, that will mean that James Cameron predicted that Avatar was fucking real. Now the, the temperature of this moon is slowly decreasing, um, I might actually need to move it slightly closer uh, and I know that some of you guys have been uh, looking at how close this moon actually is and I know, um, so what I'm going to do is make this one moon and I'm going to make this possibly 0 0.997 moons. 
So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna actually move this moon slightly closer to her parent planet. So she's gonna be about that close. And I'm gonna take this moon and move her closer. So she's gonna be about that close. And then I'm gonna take this moon and I'm gonna make her smaller. So she's gonna be about 0 0.996. So as we get further away from the gas giant, the moon's getting smaller. But then we be, well, but then suddenly we get to this absolutely massive moon um, that is Earth-like. And uh, to add another thing is that it doesn't matter what size. I mean, of course it does. I mean, the size limit for planet to be habitable is around bar size. So. I mean, you guys are, some of you guys are probably going to put in the comments like saying, Oh no, Mars died because it cooled off. No, Mars, when Mars was very young, when Mars, Earth uh, was very young, Mars was the first planet in the solar system to have liquid water, a magnetic field, an atmosphere, a moon, and life. Mars was hit by an object, um, about the size of Pluto, that what that did is it is it almost like injected heat into the mantle. That stopped uh, uh, convection in the mantle core. So that killed the planet. If an object wouldn't have hit Mars, Mars would still be Earth like today. Uh, so all we have to do really is just blow a couple of nuclear warheads in the mantle of Mars, spin its rotation up, possibly put a moon, uh, so I mean if I save this, if I call it Avatar, I need to have to spell Avatar, but uh, if I make a new sim uh, simulation and then I get Mars, Right, so if we get Mars, I got a moon, so I get possibly a. I'm trying to get smallish moon. Yeah, so something like this. If so, if I get an object like um, like if, if we get an object like uh, like this and stick it in orbit. Over hundreds of, well, possibly over a couple of thousand years, Mars's atmosphere will get thicker. That's for one. Okay, Mars's atmosphere will definitely get thicker. So we'll get about possibly 1.31 atmospheres. And then its temperature will start to uh, uh, increase. So then it will possibly get to about, uh, uh, possibly a couple of temperature, probably about 14.6 degrees. And then we could talk about, uh, so this is the actual size of Mars's core. Mars's core is actually pretty large, it's about this big, alright? And then we could talk about putting like, a. Uh, Look at water on the surface. So then, now what you got here is you got Mars reborn. This is what Mars used to look like. So, you Olympus Mars is really a coastal volcano. That's a, that's Olympus Mars right there. Uh, so there's one. So this is the impact, believe it or not, that, that massive crater out there is the impact created by this massive object. That's not Olympus Mons. That's Olympus Mons. So yeah, this is, this is the object. It was, um, so if I get Pluto, and I put it up here, yeah, definitely. That was the object that smashed into Mars and killed it. Now you're all probably going to be typing in the comments saying, um, 
If this happened to Mars, why did it not happen to Earth? That's because Earth is a much larger object. It Earth had a huge amount of more radioactive material. This stopped Earth from being killed. The radioactive material melted a hell of a lot more heat, uh, rock. So, but also, when the hit Earth, it sped up its rotation. When the object hit Mars, um, it slowed its rotation. So then when we got Mars alive, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to slow its rotation. So probably about 23 hours a day. Okay? So something like this. Then we're going to have to look at this moon. Alright, um, so this moon is going to be obviously uh, tiny locked, uh, but we're gonna have a um, possibly a lot more solar eclipses. So, how fast is this moon orbit? Orbital period 2.29 days. So, this takes twice as long as the planet takes to rotate, just over. So, nearly two and a half times longer. This is amazing. <coughs> Mars used to have a moon like this, right? A hell of a lot closer than the moon is to Earth, but hey, the moon used to be like. Um, so think about this. Uh, <coughs> Earth. The moon used to be about like here. So I've got the moon. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm, hang on, sorry. So the moon used to be like here when it when the moon first formed it was here and then it slowly drifted out but the moon isn't going to be completely gone because guess what the moon is drifting back in again and it's gonna drift out again and it's gonna drift in again and out and in and out and in so the whole thing about NASA saying that we're gonna lose our moon is complete rubbish uh, that's only if the moon doesn't get hit by an object the size of bloody Pluto. Actually, I don't know the size of Pluto. I, I, I what you mean? Uh, well, I mean, the moon gets hit by fucking Pluto. That's the end of everything, to be honest. But I think. I just think it's really awesome, so... <sighs> so also, a new type of planet is what we like to call as a uh, swamp world. Now basically this object, this planet, orbits around the same distance as um, around the orange zone so in between of Mars and Earth and uh, basically this object will be uh, pretty AE4 So, this object would for Swamp World, it would look something like So the gra the the will be pretty dark. 
and it will actually be a pretty steamy planet. It'll be the, the temperature will probably be about 30 degrees. So a pretty warm planet. But the uh, actual rotation would not be that shallow, uh, deep. It will be pr 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 uh, pretty shallow, but probably about between 10 and 20 degrees. So this is Swamp World. And then you could get a Tundra World where it lies about here. So just further than Mars is. Um, this could have anything to be honest. Um, so So a tundra world, it will look so like if I can get it right. It would look something like this. Well, <laughs> something like this. So, this is a tundra world. So, the oceans will be pretty, what's the word? Uh, pretty icy very cold world uh, when I say very cold the average temperature will be probably about minus 5 9 from minus 5 to about minus 15 that's the average temperature probably the highest temperature will be probably be about 1 or 2 degrees but these objects will be very big between three and seven times the mass um So, I mean, they could have uh, a, a couple of uh, moons, so uh, something like this. They could have two, or they could have one large moon and a couple of small moons. But these are just absolutely amazing worlds. Um, they are going to be very cold. So, um, and this moon is actually cooking. So we're gonna stop that. We're gonna stop it from cooking. Um, and so that's a tundra world. Earth flight world, obviously, we're gonna just slap Earth around here. So we're gonna put us one astro astronomical uh there you go. Uh hopefully that's not gonna get too warp. So we've got a swap world, earth flat world, uh aka earth, tundra world, tundra
tundra, like you tundra world. And then we're gonna get um so these are all the worlds to be honest. We're gonna get um oh, what's the other world? Uh, I think it's gas giant world, obviously. Uh, so something like uh, nurse poo. So that's a famous name in this game. So you could get an, uh, 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 um, uh, sorry, I can't speak. Uh, an object like. Um, this so uh can get an object like this okay and that's a beautiful pig world uh what was that noise with atmospheric comp uh, composition of about 99.7 doesn't want to do it okay 99.7 there you go uh, and, uh so Oh, what we do? Um, I don't know. <laughs> so, this could be a uh, ocean world. <laughs> so, something like. Something like this. So you got uh, swamp, earth like tundra, uh, moon. What other glorious world can you get? Ice. So if you have an object like a uh, librarian here, of uh, of name, so something like this, uh, so like this, okay, and uh, put hundreds of moons like this. go to I don't know one of these moons like the senators like uh, I'm not, I'm not senators, but like this object for example right it's it's pretty large moon if it has a very sparse atmosphere so something like this and uh, it's tightly locked we could see so similar to tiger stripes on the senators uh, so nice, like this so we could be seen something like uh, like uh, the 
these for example. So we could be seeing lines like this. Uh, I should have really slowed down, shouldn't I? So I'm going to make this super cool again. Um, I'm going to speed up slightly. So we could be seeing sight like so sight like uh oh, really? it's obviously not slow enough. So something like Looks like it doesn't want to work. Uh... So, um, uh... We could be seeing moons that are icy on the surface, but underneath they could be liquid water. So, I mean, it would be absolutely awesome to see this. Uh, so, I mean, there's a huge possibility for life. I mean, there's no way, zero percent chance that we are alone. Zero. Absolutely naught. Alright. I think they should scrap the thing where they said, oh, we could be the only species in the universe. Not true. I don't think that's true at all. Um, I, 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 just, I just think that the chance for happy world is just 100%. You will find a happy world somewhere. I mean, we already have something like nearly 50. Most of our moons, obviously, around Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, and Uranus. And uh, surprisingly, around some of the dwarf planets around. So, so around uh, Pluto, and uh, Eris, and, uh, and Make Make, and Hanuman, and, and Setna, and and uh, all these objects. Pluto has a underwater ocean. An, an underground ocean, sorry. Not underwater, because uh, I mean, you can't have an underwater ocean under, underwater. But uh, yeah, uh, so I know this, uh, this video has been a little bit odd. But I just wanted to just make a video um, on life, to be honest. But yeah, uh, you could get swamp planets, you could get Earth-like worlds, you could get tundra worlds, you could get uh, large moons, uh, uh, Earth-sized moons, and you could get uh, icy moons. You could even get a dwarf planet, so something like the size of the moon, so here 
Okay. Probably smaller than the moon. And probably a little bit closer in as well. So sort out like this. Um So probably yeah, probably bigger than the moon. Um So probably so like uh Um, so I mean you could get a dwarf planet. With ice on its surface. So both objects have ice. Um. Something like this. You get a dwarf planet and a dwarf moon. They can both have liquid uh, ocean underneath. I mean, obviously, the dwarf moon could have a larger ocean, but that's not the point. The point is, is that you can have life everywhere. Doesn't matter how how far away you could be from the sun. You could be where Phoenix is all the way to the Orc Cloud, you can still have life. I just think it's bloody awesome. I really do think it's awesome. So, anyway, this is going to be Andrew for signing out. I hope that you guys like it. Uh, I hope that you guys can subscribe, comment, share, and like this video. Uh, I would love to see your comments uh, as it will help me a lot um, also um, some some videos are not gonna have the intro anymore because I'm finding it more and more stressful making videos every day with intros uh, and I know that some of you guys are gonna be saying oh you haven't made a video for like a a month now, it's actually been nearly two months that I haven't been in videos because my computer started driving. Um, so anyway, I'm going to see you guys later since the ultimate signing out. Goodbye.